present plays from the four corners of the world. Comedy, drama, suspense, true life adventure in Tuesday Theatre. If you're too old for raspberry milkshakes, you're old enough to say, je t'aime. Oh, je t'aime. Oui, je t'aime. Experience je t'aime, a new perfume deodorant spray for your body beautiful in three pulse-racing fragrances to keep you cool, confident, and practically irresistible all day. Oh, je t'aime. Oui, je t'aime. Je t'aime. Are you ready for it? This toothpaste... Mentadent P. What does the P mean? Ah, uh, that means prevents plaque. Ah, oh, and plaque is? Plaque builds up on the teeth and can cause gum disease. Now, more teeth are lost through gum disease than decay. Oh, that's not nice. No, but Mentadent P is the only toothpaste with zinc citrate, and that helps stop plaque build up. Mentadent P. Here come the beer. Kronenbroi 1308. Die gouwe eikehout belee bier. Gouwe eikehout veredeling. Maak Kronenbroi 1308. Die koning van bier. Made yourself very comfortable here, Mr. Barton. Oh, I was lucky. I went into the copra business just as the market price rose. Bought this plantation from an Irishman who returned to his Emerald Isle in a state of disillusionment. Well, the copra price is low now. You wouldn't care to sell me the plantation? Well, the price will go up during the year. And even if it doesn't, I'm still comfortable here on Tatamona. That's all I need within call. Except civilization. Oh, on Tatamona, I am civilization. <laughs> I've no end to visit Darwin or Sydney, let alone take a long sea voyage to London. Everything I want and need is here on the island. Another drink? Hmm, please. Hmm. I live the life of a feudal overlord. Benign one, of course. My workers are well paid, the children schooled in the rudimentaries. For a man with simple needs, Tatamona is paradise. Cheers. Cheers. <clears throat> if you succeed in finding a plantation among the <coughs> islands, Mr. Gale, you too will find a paradise. You're a wealthy young man. I'm sure you'll find a plantation owner willing to sell. Well, if I can't buy yours, I'll find a nice strip of coastal land and create a plantation. When I rounded the southerly tip of the peninsula this morning, I found the land between the sea and the volcanic crater to be most impressive. Fertile and uh, picturesque. Ah, you're talking of Waku Waku. Rather remote and very windy in the winter. Actually, I was thinking that if I were ever to expand, Waku Waku would be the ideal spot to do so. Largely unexplored, you know. And the Polynesians living there are extremely primitive and superstitious. Bruce Gale's chartered schooner had put in only that afternoon after a leisurely sail from the Fijis. He was no more than 30, yet his presence oozed wealth and his self-assured but easygoing manner reminded one of a self-exiled English aristocrat, which, as it turned out, he was. The day after his arrival, I took him down to the peninsula that had taken his fancy, a fertile area of sandy bays and coral, and overlooked by the restive volcano known as Waku Waku. I'd only been there once before, and I'd been put off by the apparent indifference of the villagers. Not so Bruce Gale. Breaking through the language barrier with gestures and pidgin English, he quickly had them chattering and laughing. By the time I left the next day, they were happily building a hut for him. He ordered his schooner back to Suva to complete its voyage, virtually stranding himself. A hundred miles to the north, on my own plantation, I spent two weeks wondering how he was progressing. <laughs> well, go on, say it. Bruce. Br Bruce. Excellent, good. And you are Katia. Me, Katia. Mm -hmm. Your brother, him, Waha. Brother, Waha. Yes. <laughs> Oh, blast. It's that darn medicine man of yours. I wish he'd give up trying to frighten me away. Medicine man say, Bruce, 
But for people, bring sickness, people die. Oh, such utter rot. Make God wako wako angry. Well, that's odd. Very odd indeed. You speak? Oh, uh, excuse me a moment, my dear. Hey, you. Will you go away before I wring your scrawny neck? Not a man sicko and a panahina. Maha. Well, that's better. I wish I knew what you said to get rid of the blighter. Tell I panahina. He go. I see. Well, whatever that means, it was certainly effective. Uh, now, listen. Who taught you words uh, sickness and uh, angry? I didn't teach you. No, many words. Boat, tree, fall, house, water, mm -hmm. swim, uh, bad, uh, but who sun. To who told you? Sing, happy. Oh, why, well, he know plenty more. Then stop and listen to me, Katia. Who taught you those words? Tiwana. He know many words. Speak to Waka Waka with words. Uh, which one is Tiwana? Hmm? Uh, who, Tiwana? Him, there. Medicine man. I see. So that, that shriveled old devil knows some English, eh? <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Wait, where'd you go? To wring a few words out of the old wretch. Bruce Gale left the side of the pretty Polynesian girl and strode across to where the scarecrow figure, adorned in beads and brightly colored feathers, was under the shade of a wattle lean-to. The medicine man cringed when he saw Bruce towering over him. It's about time you and I had a chat. I know what he needed. Now stop playing games. You know some of my language, so use it. No, who are you? Now listen, you've been threatening me for days now and trying to turn the people against me. I want to know why. Yes, you know what I'm saying. I can see it there in your shiny pig-like eyes. Now come on, before I twist off your mangy head. No, no, don't, don't, stop, uh, stop. I knew it. Let me go, will you? You ruin everything. What? I don't believe it. A paddy, no less. Here, keep your voice down, or we'll both be in trouble. How in heaven's name did you manage I'll to... I'll tell you after. Now, look, I'm going to say something to show these people that we're friends now. You take my arm and walk off somewhere, and we can talk. How would you do that now? All right, go ahead. And you are who need you, or you who have a That made them happy. Now, come on, now, let's take a walk. The people, the people call this place uh, waterfall here, Ahi Wuha, the tears of the god. Now, look, I don't require a guided tour. Just explain yourself. Well, it's like this, you see. It must be all of 40 years ago I was washed up here after my ship was wrecked. And I was looked upon as some kind of gift from the sea because I taught him a few things. It was when I showed him a few amateurish car tricks and, and kids' country tricks that they really got interested I was uh, instantly the village medicine man and direct messenger of the god of the volcano, Waku Waku. Well, I've lived good all these years, and I don't want nobody to come along and spoil it all. Which is why you've been trying to scare me away? Well, I've got myself to think of, you know. You, you can't blame me for that. <laughs> well, that weird get-up and uh, your self-appointed profession seem harmless enough. There's no reason why I should spoil it for you. Oh, Thanks. Well, I could tell him that I found another one who could speak the language of the god Waku Waku. Very religious they are, they'd like that. Say anything you like, just as long as they cooperate with my long-term plans. Uh, you got plans, sir? Certainly. I want to turn this entire peninsula into a coconut plantation. Oh, I don't think they'd like that. They will. They'll all work hard and make money. Trading schooners will start to call here with goods for them to buy. Their whole lives will be transformed. I still don't think they'd like that, sir. They've got everything they want here right now. Well, we'll wait and see. Well, the men and the women won't work. There's no reason for them to. Well, you could, you could turn them against you. And that would make it difficult for me. Well, if they won't work, I'll just import labor from the Fijis. There's always a way, Paddy. My name's Kerry. Albert Kerry, ex boss in Eastern Crescentshire. Mm hmm. Why the faraway look? Oh, I was looking back over me years here. Happy ones they've been. Seems a pity to spoil this paradise, but. Making the folks work. And, you know, cutting down the trees and all that. Well, Mr. Barton has a plantation, and uh, he still calls it a paradise. Oh, hey, paradise for him, no doubt. But what about the gentle people that, that used to be there? Ten hours a day breaking open coconuts and stripping out copra. Oh, that's not my idea of paradise, sir. If you'll excuse my sake. 
Well, we mustn't get sentimental, Kerry. It's a hard commercial world out there. These people must look beyond an idle life of fishing and sleeping. Anyway, how can a man really enjoy leisure when his entire life consists of leisure? Make the blight of work, and then he can truly appreciate his odd periods of recreation. It's a funny way of looking at it, I must say. Oh, first I must recruit your assistance, Kerry. One pound a week, and all found. Oh, would have found it good in the old days, sir. But what good would it do here? But nobody knows what a pound looked like here, mm, sir. They soon will, my dear chap. You can make a start by appealing to their primitive superstitions. What with being the local witch doctor. You can tell them that this god, uh, Waku Waku, will bring them wonderful gifts from across the wide waters if they start to clear the ground at the foot of the volcano. I think that stretch over there, as far as the cliff's edge, will do nicely for a start. Well, no, it'll do me best, sir. Excellent. Have the people moving by the end of the month, and you'll have your first pay increase. A whole guinea a week. And very generous of you, too, Mr. Gale. But, uh, first we'll have to wait until the end of the Panahenna ceremony in three days' time. And what primitive nonsense is that? A human sacrifice to Waku Waku. It happens once every year. What? Good heavens, man, what a beastly practice. It must be stopped. Panahina. I say, isn't that what the girl Katia said to you earlier? Aye, sir. It's uh, her way of telling me to leave her in peace. You see, she's this year's sacrifice. Every day, more and more families are discovering the protein goodness of Saldana. Every day's a good day for Pilchins. Every day's a good day for Pilchins. Every day's a good day for Pilchins. Saldana Pilchins, all the protein value of best beef steak at only one-sixth the cost. Now, distinguished smoking comes to mild cigarettes in king-size length. Dunhill Superior Mild, King Size. A mild, rewarding cigarette in the Dunhill tradition. Made with patience, care and infinite skill to bring mildness to the gentle art of smoking. Now in King Size length, Dunhill Superior Mild. From the most distinguished tobacco house in the world. Make love to the sun with Revlon's new Bronze Luster Collection, designed especially for sun lovers. Prevent your skin from drying while you tan beautifully with Bronze Luster lotions, creams, and gelades. Free silhouette suntan stickers with every purchase of Bronze Luster by Revlon. This is monstrous. It is our way. How can you smile and say a thing like that? If people no give Pani Hina, Waku Waku angry, make big fire and ground shake. Kerry, surely after all these years you could have convinced these people that human sacrifice is wrong. Oh, I tried. But there was a minor eruption, so I gave up. Even my magic wasn't strong enough. But, but Katia, surely you don't want to die? I must. It is my place. I was born for Waku Waku. You see, sir? She's been brought up in the knowledge that in her 16th year, she becomes Waku Waku's bride. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, to Katia, it's a great honor, well, sir. it must be stopped. We can't have pretty young girls being thrown into volcanoes. Well, they, they don't get thrown into volcanoes, sir. Oh, nothing like that at all. Oh, they get taken into Waku Waku's mouth. That's that cavern close up by the stretch of land you pointed out this morning for cultivation. Mm -hmm. It goes down inside the volcano. And then what? It goes deep, deep down until you reach a chamber. And she'll be secured to the wall, and then Waku Waku will come later and take her. Then who or what is Waku Waku? But I explain, sir. The god of the volcano. I know that, man. But, but what is Waku Waku really? Surely you don't believe in volcano gods. Oh, there's a lot to it, sir. It's a fact that four days after the Panahin has been left there, she's gone. Gone? Completely? Well, all except her bones. You mean 
her flesh is eaten away? Well, I, I suppose you could say that, yes. Uh, approaching this problem logically, then, we can conclude that some creature comes along and eats the flesh of the sacrificial victim. And the thing is, what? Waka waka. Oh, Tommy Rotten, you know it. Uh, is there another exit to this chamber? Aye, oh, but only very low and narrow. Hot air comes out of it most of the time. So whatever it is comes out of there, right? When is this absurd ceremony? Tomorrow night the victim is placed in the chamber, but the feasting begins at sunset this evening. That is when the women will begin to prepare Katia for a marriage to Waku Waku. Well, before that happens, I intend to find out what this flesh-eating Waku Waku is. Have a supply of torches prepared, and tonight we'll go and take a look. Apart from ridding the peninsula of a ritual that offended his sense of morality, I think Bruce Gale also thought it might be a good method of gaining the loyalty of the villagers who were he able to discredit their so-called god. After all, he reasoned, they can't seriously enjoy sacrificing one of their maidens every year. That night, after the villagers had taken to their huts, Bruce and his new employee went to the entrance of the huge cathedral-like cavern, each bearing a blazing torch. In addition, Bruce carried a heavy caliber hunting rifle. At the far end of the cavern, Kerry led the way into a tunnel which inclined steeply downwards. Well, if I didn't know better, I'd say this tunnel was cut by hand. I think a more likely explanation is that it once carried water down into the belly of the volcano. Well, I, well, I wouldn't know, sir. But we should hear Waku Waku soon. Hear him? What do you mean? Well, wait, and you'll hear for yourself. The natives say it's him calling for his sacrifice. We'll be coming into the chamber now. Oh, and that's as far as we can go. There, there's now. Do you hear it? Yes, that I did. And there's got to be a logical explanation for it. To, to, to me, it sounds like the soul being tormented in the fires of hell itself. You're as superstitious as the darn people here. If they knew he was down here, they'd be angry. We're here for their benefit, Kerry. Uh, look, but the tunnel's widening out. Uh, the, the chamber, sir. How often have you been here? Well, every time Waku Waku Bride is sacrificed. It's been my job all these years to tie her down. Look. Oh, really, this is terrible. What is, sir? Well, the skeleton's littered all over the place, of course. It's shocking. Well, it's against their religion to move them. They've just accumulated over the years. There are hundreds of them. It's disgusting. You can hear Waku Waku louder now. Yes. Well, I have a good idea of what causes that noise. A mixture of wind and water, old chap. Are these the holes you were telling me about? That's where the god of the volcano comes from, so they say. Yes. Well, nothing much can get through these. They're no wider than uh, about eight inches across. Yes. You can feel the air blowing through them, hence the wailing noise. I don't quite understand what you mean, sir. Well, we must be fairly close to sea level here. At the other end of those holes, I'd say there's a cavern which uh, fills up with water at high tide. Uh -huh. Air blown into the cavern comes through these holes like a gigantic organ that uh -huh. makes the noise. Then, during particularly high tides, this cavern we're standing in fills with water and drowns the sacrificial victim. Oh, I don't know about that, sir. It don't look like water's been flowing through here. Well, it wouldn't, carry. The water would rise very slowly, and as the tide recedes, it'd seep away down through the sandy floor. The air blowing through the holes would dry the sandy surface quickly, leaving the chamber looking as though nothing at all had happened. Oh, I see what you mean. But the uh, Panahina is eaten. By what? Well, that's quite simple. She drowns, and I don't for a moment doubt that the place abounds with crabs. They can easily strip the flesh from an immersed body in no time at all. <laughs> yes, Kerry, there's your volcano god. Water, air, and a lot of little hungry crabs. Oh, it's a convincing argument, I admit. <laughs> yes, but, but you're not sure, eh? Well, never mind, those superstitions do die hard. Well, for the life of me, I can't understand why these people haven't waited and watched after placing the sacrificial victim on the floor. Oh, they wouldn't, sir. Too scared. There's a taboo. Yes, a taboo invented by a long-dead medicine man seeking power and mystery. Probably only he knew what happened to the poor victim. Oh, these primitive people are so easily fooled. Oh, I think you're right. Ah, well, I'm glad you can see sense. 
because now I want you to help me to save Katia's life. During most of the following day, Katia went through numerous rituals of cleansing and purification. An hour before sunset, she stood before all, her body shiny from coconut oil, and clad only in a short raffia skirt and a crown of hibiscus flowers. It was time for her to say farewell to her weeping family. When this was done, there were a few minutes left for Kerry to speak to her. How can you say there is no God called Waku Waku? It's true, Katia. You've got to trust me and Mr. Gale. All we want to do is stop you from throwing your life away. How you know all this? We went to look last night when you were all sleeping. Mr. Gale's a very clever man. He has more magic than you, Tiwana? Oh, much more magic. He's very wise. He knows the ways of all the gods. All the gods, Katia. Now, will you put your trust in us? Tell me what I must do. When I tie you, your bonds will be loose. And when the people and I leave, you'll wriggle free and wait. Mr. Gale will come, and he'll show you what this god of the mountain really is. Then we will both die? No, no, Mr. Gale's much too smart for that. There'll be no dying of anyone tonight. Procession, led by the village elders and the sacrificial victim, entered the great cavern and filed slowly down the steep tunnel. Kerry had a firm hold on the girl's arm. Lights flickered from the smooth walls, weirdly illuminating the features of the gathering. Soon they entered the chamber, littered with the bones of those who had gone before Gatia. It was wide, about thirty feet square, with a soft, sandy floor. Hundreds of small holes honeycombed two of the walls, and high up, the roof could barely be discerned. Disturbed bats squeaked softly and fluttered by. The procession stopped just inside the entrance where all could see what followed. Katia stepped forward and seated herself on a stone shelf. Gary took several strips of brightly colored strands of raffia and tied together her hands and feet. Then the little Irishman took her in his arms and carried her to the far side of the chamber and gently lay her on the floor. A keening wail went up from the gathering. Katia was now ready for Waku Waku. As soon as we've gone, wriggle free and run up the tunnel. I'll be waiting for you, and so will Mr. Gale. Aye, and then we'll find out the truth. All right now? Yes, dear Wana. I am well. Gary walked across to the elders and gestured they should now leave. They filed out, and the light in the chamber dimmed until it was softly illuminated by a single torch which had been thrust into a stone bracket on the wall. Katia held her breath and listened, her senses sharpened to their ultimate perception. Kerry had underestimated her religious fervor. She made no attempt to escape from the awesome thing that was Waku Waku. the spirit of freedom it's smirnoff and any mixer you like coke tonic even on the rocks with smirnoff the world's favorite spirit you're free to do as you please superman is a hit say the super critics Newsweek says Christopher Reeve's entire performance is a delight. Can I take you to the airport? Not unless you can fly. Judith Crist says Margot Kidder is a delightful Lois Lane. The problem with Men of Steel, there's never one around when you want one. And Time Magazine calls it a film that's fun for everyone. Superman, the movie. From CIC Warner. Craftsmanship is mastership. The creative art of the old masters finds its counterpart in the exacting skill devoted to the making of Rembrandt van Rijn, the masterpiece in cigarettes. As the procession emerged into the warm night air, 
Kerry dodged back into the cabin and raced back through the darkness until he could vaguely make out the red glimmer of light coming from the stone chamber below. There, he stopped and waited, fearful to go closer. It was there that he had expected to find Katia. Oh, it's funny. She can't have passed me in the darkness. Oh, blast it. Why doesn't she come out? I tied her loosely. But where's Mr. Gale? He promised to get here as soon as... Yeah, ah, a light. A light ahead in the passage. It's him. I'll be bound. I'm here, Mr. Gale. The girl. Where is she? Oh, she's still in the chamber. I tied her loose. Honest, I did. Well, then why didn't she come out? Oh, there's no accounting for the way these people's minds work. They're like the Chinese, you know. Fatalistic. She's made up her mind to die, and die she will. Not if I can help it. I'm going down into the chamber. Are you coming? I, uh, no, I, I'd rather stay here if you don't mind, sir. When Bruce Gale entered the chamber, he had his hunting rifle leveled and ready to face almost any eventuality. Yet nothing had changed since the girl had been placed inside. He stepped over to her. She looked up at him, eyes wide. He stooped beside her and fumbled with her bonds. Katia, you must come. No, Bruce. Wako, wako, come now. Hear him? Yeah, right. Your hands are free. Now, come on. Slip your feet out of this loop. I must stay. Tommy, rot. You're coming with me if I have to carry you. A moment later, Kerry heard a shout followed by a scream. <laughs> he ran down the tunnel to the entrance of the chamber, and the sight that met his eyes made him instinctively shrink back. The sandy floor was coming alive, surging and bubbling as thousands of small round creatures surfaced. From the hundreds of holes around the walls, similar creatures poured with a scraping, scratching noise into the chamber. Already, Bruce Gale had backed off into a corner, unslinging his rifle. Even as he fired, a dozen or more crabs were climbing up his leg. The girl was still lying where she had been placed. But she was now little more than a seething mound of grey-shelled crabs which tore at her flesh with razor-sharp pincers. Kerry, for the love of heaven, do something! No! No! But what could the puny Irishman do? Unable to watch Gale being pulled down and eaten alive, he fled back up the passage, the tortured screams burning into his ears. I arrived at Waku Waku a week later on my schooner to see how Bruce Gale was progressing. After my initial surprise of Kerry introducing himself to me, we went together down the tunnel. It was difficult to distinguish one skeleton from the next until I saw a bony claw still clasped about the metal breech of a hunting rifle. Even the wooden stock had been eaten away. Bruce Gale had most certainly not found his paradise. Listen again next week when once again we bring you a comedy, a drama, or a play of suspense in Tuesday Theatre. <laughs>